So I'm going to demonstrate part of the analysis we should do here. Um, so this is the spatial autocorrelation, the correlogram for the variable memo richness. This is the map of memo richness. Uh, I have to confess that for mapping purposes, I did try to beat ArcGIS, and I invested a lot of time in features in SAM for that. And the rule was, it should be prettier, easier, and publishable. So there are lots of graphical features in SAM that helps you to, uh, with very few clicks, produce publishable maps. For example, you can right click and do edit map labels. Then you can start changing the title, subtitle, uh, everything here. Um, you can also play with the uh, color bar, the legend. You can change, how, uh, where is it? Change its name, change the this, the font, change everything. You also move your mouse over here. You have must have seen that. Uh, you get the exact value for that variable in that particular cell by moving it on top of the map. And once you are done producing the map, you can just right click, do copy graph figure, and now you can just paste it in your manuscript. Right click, co copy graph figure. In improving the picture, that pixelation is a challenge. You see how it appears. Is it? Where? The squares. Well, the squares are consequence of my grid, not consequence of the graphical interface. I have defined the grid here, and it should have 50 by 50 kilometers. It doesn't have to look uh, perfect resolution. And that's not a, a property of the graphics. It's a property of the grid, OK? Uh, there's also something that I'm kind of proud of, is playing with the, the colors. Mm. Maybe you have played with edit color classes. Ah, it's always hitting, hiding. Let me just minimize this. So here's the map. And here is the histogram of how different cells have different uh, values for memo richness. You can just play with this and change the scale. Uh, and you can uh, change classes by moving them here too. And you can also change the color scheme, like this one, or whatever. So I find it a lot more easy to change graphical features than in ArcGIS. And uh, of course, the best software is the one that you are most familiar with until you get most familiar with something else. So you should feel free to explore graphical options here. Um, okay, when we look at the spatial autocorrelation, two things you should notice. First, what is the effect of increasing number of grid of number of distance classes? So suppose you want 30 distance classes. 
what happens? How does it affect your final result? Um, where is the distance of independence? Uh, do you get uh, p-values larger than 0 0.05? Like non-significant spatial autocorrelation? And what is the effect of decreasing the number of distance classes? What happens in your correlogram? Do you get the same result, same interpretation? Also, what is the effect of uh, distributing pairs of sites across uh, among distance classes, evenly or unevenly? What happens to your final distance classes? What's, what happens to your final Moran's eye? Moran's eyes. Especially when you have too many distance classes? Does it change anything? What's your Moran's eye value? So those are questions that you should be able to answer by exploring the data. Also, uh, which variable has the most spatial correlation? Is it altitude? Like this? Uh, is it precipitation? Like this? Which one? Precipitation. Precipitation. Mm -hmm. Can you look at the map and then look at the correlogram and see that the correlogram is a simplification of the map? Can, can you tell that? And can you recognize the scale? The, the, the scale of distances in this map here. Also, what are these numbers over here? Anyone guess? What is count? Number of uh, pairs of sites within each distance class. Uh, this is the distance centroid for that particular class, which is the one that is being plotted on the x-axis. And then there is Moran's i. It's this dot 899 is the Moran's I value for that particular distance class. So if you want to reproduce that graph in a different software, you only need this column and this column. That's all you need. Because this graph is just a plot between the two. And then there is a standard error. What is a standard error? Does anyone remember from biostats class? Hmm? I'm sorry? So the magic, the plus or minus of that, I think distance for the center or something like that. It's central. No, I'm, I'm particularly asking what is the standard error? What does it mean? Or the standard deviation. What does, you, you see a column saying distance class, count, distance centroid, Moran's I, and then error. standard error? Yes. What do you think that measure, what th that is measuring, or what, what is that? The, 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 the variance of the distance. Square root of the variance. No, it's 
standard deviation over the root of n, which is measure variance from variance. Variance of what? Of the distance. Mm -hmm. Not the distance. Or for Moran, maybe, on account. Maybe Moran is i. Yeah. yeah. The standard error is always the variance of a estimate. Yes. Right? So it's a ver it's a variance of one particular parameter that I'm trying to not the variance of the parameter, but it's a variance of an estimate of a of a parameter. Okay? So this means that if if I had to recount or or do infinite analysis here. Uh, if I could go back to the field and do and calculate memo richness again, my Moran's I value would be ranging uh, plus or minus dot zero one eight. So that's the standard error or the variance. It's actually a standard deviation of my estimate. And from that, I can calculate a p value. Which tells me what? Tells me uh, how frequently I would expect. Huh? Anyone remembers? But what a, what's the interpretation of a p-value? and the margin of error you can have in that particular the degree of confidence and acceptability of what of the statistics you've just done. Mm. The error it, that that's how we use it. Yeah. Not, not exactly what it means. Go ahead. The error that you make by rejecting <laughs> by accepting What is the statistical significance? It's less, it's less than 0 0.05 it's significant. The observation is significant if it's more than 0 0.005 then you don't have to Correct. That's how we use it. That's that's how you apply whatever information it gives to you. Not exactly what it means. But but that's correct. Okay. Anyone else? No? No? Sure? No one? <laughs> so the p value can be uh, interpreted. Uh, from the frequentist's uh, perspective, from the perspective of the uh, frequentist statistics, like we did when we were randomizing Moran's eye, remember? So, how frequently should I expect a Moran's eye value that is larger than the one I observed if the null hypothesis is true? Which means, how frequently I'm going to find a Moran's eye value larger than this one if there's no spatial autocorrelation. That's the actual meaning of it. So it requires you to think that you're going to repeat your analysis and requires you to think uh, that the null hypothesis is true because that's what it assumes. The null hypothesis is a true uh, fact. Okay? 
So that's the, the uh, p value. And here it's, it's not significant. I don't like that word, but that's not significant for any class. Still, uh, with or without the hypothesis testing, the correlogram is very useful just to describe a map. Uh, also, here is the Morenzi value, uh, the maximum Morenzi, which is here uh, shown in this uh, blue area. So the closer the Morenzi is to this boundary, uh, the higher it truly is. So here's the uh, standardized Morenzi value, I over I maximum, okay? So this one you can act, we can actually interpret as the maximum possible Morenzi value between minus one and one, right? 